Hey, my friend, today I'm gonna show you a chord move that all the pros are using. And if you're not using this chord principle, you are missing out on a lot to make better crafted chord progressions. And that chord move is called a deceptive cadence. It's when the melody on top of your chords goes where you expect it to go. It lands to resolve where you expect it, but the chords don't exactly go where you expect them to go. Right? That's called a deceptive cadence. So let's say that I have a super simple melody that goes like this. So I'm in the key of C major, I'm using notes in my C major scale. So I'm just using the fifth note, one, two, three, four, five, 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 two, seven, one, right here. So what we would expect by hearing this is super simple harmony. Probably you would expect the root chord, which is C in the key of C. And probably when there are little tension notes like the two and the seven, you probably expect a five chord which is a G in that case. Da, 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 da. Super simple and exactly what we expect. So if I were to play on top of the melody like this. And probably now you're thinking, I would never write something like this. It sounds like children's music. And you are right. It's pretty boring like this is. But it's still what our ears expect. When we play a scale up to the seventh note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what we hear is, that's the most common way to hear what is happening melodically right here. So our job, if we don't want to be too predictable, is to choose a different chord to resolve to that also works on, to on top of that note. Because when you're thinking about it, we have to manage two different things all the time when we write music. How we handle tensions and resolutions so that it makes sense and it's well crafted and the expectations of the listener. So when we play too much of what people expect, it becomes boring. That's why chord progression using the circle of fifths like... We just know which chord is gonna come next all the time. So it might become boring after a while, but if we give them not enough of what they're expecting, it's just gonna sound weird. Like it's just, it just doesn't make sense. It's too weird. So we have to try to, to find a balance between them, a middle ground between what we expect, but not exactly what we expect also. And that's where the deceptive cadence comes in handy. So instead of playing C, G, C, what if we found a chord that also has the C note in it, but that is not the obvious C major chord. So in the key of C, we have the chord A minor that also has the C. It's on our index right here. So when the melody plays the B, C, we could land on that A minor chord. We could also land on F, which has a C, right? So we could try all of these options on top of the melody. Not exactly what we expect, but it works. Let's try with F now. Right? So it just, it flows nicely, but it, it's not as resolved. It's not like, okay, the song, we could not end the song right here. It 
doesn't sound like it's gonna end here. So it makes it as the, your chord progression is not fully resolved. So there's a forward momentum by using a deceptive cadence like this. And sometimes if you want a bigger element of surprise, you could find chords that are outside your key. And as long as the note where we resolve on, in our case C, as long as the chord has a C in it. So for example, an A flat major chord is not usually in my C major key, but it has a C in it. So that could be a chord where I land on for a deceptive cadence that would add a bigger element of surprise. Right? And we could go even further. If you want to make your chord progressions longer and more interesting, uh, you could do that even on the second repetition. So for example, the second time we repeat the same melody, we start on the note five. One, two, three, four, five. We start on the note five of our scale. So we could do exactly the same principle. Which chords in the key of C major have the note the fifth note in it, which is a G. We have, we have obviously the G major chord, but we also have E minor, which has an open G. So I could say the, the second time I repeat my melody, I'm gonna start with E minor instead of C, which will also be something that we don't expect. And then I could repeat the G, and instead of going to A minor again, I could try the F. So my whole chord progression is gonna be C, G, A minor, E minor, G, F. And that's gonna add more variety and just a, a stronger and more complete chord progression than just playing You know what I mean, right? So let's try the chord progression that I told you right here. Right, it works well, and then it's up to you which kind of embellishments do you wanna add. I could have the C and then an inversion of my G chord so that it sounds even smoother, right? We hear that in a lot of songs. You, there are many principles here that you might have heard in the Beatles or uh, Eric Clapton. Right, it's super classic, but there's a reason. It's because it flows nicely. So I could do, I could add a little inversion here, and I could even play my F chord as an F minor after, uh, a minor four chord to add a little color, and it still works because we land on C. And whether I play an F major or minor, I still have the C note inside of the chord so that works. So let's try with this. So you see so many examples and application on how you can use the deceptive cadence here. So make the note of your melody resolve where it needs to go, but find other chords that can fit underneath and that's gonna be super good. And if you want more help on actually finding which chords go in which keys, like maybe you say, oh Antoine, you just lost me when you said, 
okay, you have a G note, but there's a G inside E minor. Like, how do I know that E minor fits in the key of C? Or how do I know which chords fit into which keys? If that, that is so, you can enroll in my free mini course, first link in the description box. In the second module of that free course, we go through harmonization, how to find all the chords in any key you want, to know which chords are available to choose to craft your own chord progressions and to apply that deceptive cadence principle. And you can also download uh, pre-written chord progressions that you could even steal to make your own songs. I have chord charts, I have other things I teach. So it's super valuable, you can get it first link in the description box below. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I'm gonna see you soon. Until next time, au revoir.